Hey, hey, party people, I'm Sean Mullen from RampantDesignTools.com, and today I'm going to show you how to make this thingy, this 3D thingy with all the paint thingies and this other thingies. Now, this is a 3D logo made completely inside After Effects, no plugins required, and the paint is included. That's right, absolutely free. Well, how do I get this, you say? Well, first and foremost, if you're not a part of 4kfree.com, what are you doing? What's going on? Why aren't you? Do you not love us? Come on. We love you. Go to 4kfree.com. That's the number four, the letter K, followed by free, F-R-E-E.com. And when you go there, it looks like this. And if you're not signed up, just go ahead and put your name in and put your uh, email in and then click here. And that takes you up and over here. And you get all these great assets. These are all from our library, but they're free. They're not watermarked. They're not compressed. They are free. They're straight out of our library. We're giving you a little bit from every single library so you can check out our stuff and see what's up. But if you go all the way to the top right here, this is a brand new section, new today actually, free project files. Click on this, this uh, Rampant Paint Splatter Logo After Effects project right here. It contains a couple of After Effects projects, one for CS6, one for CC, and one for CC 2015. So as long as you're running CS6 or higher, you'll be able to load this up and it comes with our free paint. So once, you're doing, once you've done that and downloaded that goodness, it only takes a few seconds, you'll be able to jump into After Effects and you'll see this bad boy right here. All right. But let's say, hey, you know what? That's cool that you gave me this project, but I want to know how you made it. I want to know how to do this myself. Well, I'm glad you asked that. That's what we're doing here. Let's start off with going to composition, new composition. Now, it doesn't matter what um, resolution you were working at beforehand. When you open up new composition, it might say anything, right? So let's go ahead and if it doesn't say 1920 by 1080, go ahead and put 1920 by 1080 in and then check lock aspect ratio, okay? All right. Then click on 1920 and change it to 2600. Why are we doing that? Because we're going to make comps bigger than HD so we can move the camera around later. So let's go ahead and 2600, boom, 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 hit OK. Cool. Now this is a really easy comp. Even if you've never worked in After Effects before, there's only really six or seven steps here. So even if you've never touched AE before, you can totally do this. I promise. Let's walk through it right now. Before we get going anymore though, let's go back up to composition and set composition settings. Let's be organized here. I'm not very organized, but let's, for the sake of this tutorial, let's be organized. So we're going to call this comp number one space, and we're just going to call it the name. This is where you change the name. That way, if you have to go back to this project, you know where, where things are. So go ahead and click OK. So what do we do? Well, you put in the name. So click our text tool and just type in whatever name you want. And I'm just gonna scooch it over like so and pull it back down a little bit. Yeah, that's pretty good. Cool. Guess what? That comp's done. Moving on to comp number two. Composition, new composition two, and we're gonna call it paint. What do you know? This is where we put the paint in. So let's go ahead and click our first composition here, the name, and just drag it in for reference, right? And then we're going to pull up these two paint elements right here. Pretty cool stuff. This is from our paint library. It's called Studio Paint, and this is absolutely free. Now, as you can see, they have transparencies, but the, the paint is black. So let's go ahead and drop 21 over our name. You can't really see it because, one, uh, it's black, and two, we don't have our transparency turned on. So let's turn our transparency back on here. And now, now you can see this like nice little paint splat. It's cool and all, but I'm going to reposition it. So go ahead and hit R, kind of just tweak it the way you want. I want to cover as much of the letters as possible because that leads to a cooler effect, right? But I don't want black ink. That's not what we were doing here. So let's go under Effect, Color Correction, Tint. And you've got two options, Mac, Map Black 2 and Map White 2. Well, there's no white in this image. There's no white in this paint. So all we have to do is worry about Map Black. So change black to whatever color you want. I'm going to pick this like super funky green color, you know, like day glow green. Cool. Now, I've got this other uh, paint effect. Drop that on. Again, same issue. It's black. I want to move this over here and I want to change the color. So well, I can do one of two things. We just used the tint effect, so it's already there in your latest used effect. You can just do this, pull it up, and change uh, green or uh, your green or excuse me, your black to uh, hmm. I don't know, let's make it like a purple, right? You can do it that way. Or if I undo, I can go to my previous uh, paint effect, hit E, highlight tint, hit copy, and hit paste. That's going to make it green, so you go up to here, change your tint, and then you just pick your color from there. Either way works. Okay, cool. Now make sure to turn name off. This is just for reference. Okay, that comp is done. We're halfway there. We're on to comp number three. Comp number three is split in two parts. So I'm going to go ahead and do composition, new composition. I'm going to do 3A, paint logo. 
All right. So I'm going to bring in the name and I'm going to bring in the paint. Now make sure to put paint underneath the name. We're going to get a lot of people who are going to write us and say this doesn't work because this is a crucial step. Make sure paint is underneath your name and go over here to track mat and pull it down to alpha. Now you see the name disappeared. You're like, oh, what happened? Scroll through the timeline. And now wherever there's paint just trapped inside the, the name, you're going to see that. So in other words, we're trapped inside the rampant, but only where there's paint. See, it's pretty cool, right? Now what we need to do just to fix this up a little bit is duplicate number one, which is our name, and pull it down underneath two. Not complicated. You've got name, you've got paint, and then just turn name on. Now it rounds it out, right? So you just roll it back. Ah, cool. So we've got our paint contained inside of our, of our title, which will in turn make it look like the paint is wrapping around the title when we're done. Okay, cool. One more step in this comp and we're on to 3B. Really simple comp here. All right, so go to new adjustment layer and make sure to pull the adjustment layer at the very top. And we wanna do a bevel. So you can go under effect, perspective, bevel alpha. And let's go ahead and put this at zero. So the bevel's at the very top. And let's set this up to like, I don't know, somewhere around four and bump this up just a little bit too. Cool. And now if I turn this to full res, you can see a nice little bevel here. See, just give it a little bit of dimension. Awesome. That's done. Okay. Told you this is a super simple comp. I get a lot of people saying, oh, I don't want to use After Effects. I don't like it or I don't have time to learn it. I promise you we're almost done. We're more than halfway there. So let's go to composition, new composition. And we're going to call this 3B Dark Paint Logo. Go to your project window and pull in 3A Paint Logo, the one we just made, right? Now go under Effect, Color Correction, Levels. And we want to take this little knob right here and pull it down. This is our output white value. Let's make this dark. There we go. That's good. And then that's done. What? That's crazy. Yep. Moving on to number four. Composition, new composition. We're going to do four. And this is going to be the extrude. This is where we turn everything into 3D, right? Cool. So the first thing we're going to do is grab our paint logo, bring it in. And then we're going to grab our dark paint logo and bring it in. Now. Let's go ahead and right here, this little cube thing, click that, and now these layers are 3D. All right, so the next thing we do is we extrude it. There's one of two ways that I'm aware of that you can do this. Now, the way we get a 3D extrusion in After Effects without any software is that we just keep stacking the layers in Z-Space and just pushing them one, one uh, pixel away in Z-Space over and over again until you get a long enough extrusion. It's really just basically adding a bunch of layers until it gets longer. I mean, it's just really it is what it is. So hit P for position. We're not worried about anything else except this number right here. This is our Z-Space, right? So if I pull it up, it comes closer. If I pull it back, it gets further. That's just that's set that simple. I'm going to undo. And so one way of doing this is just to take this layer right here, duplicate it, and this number, put it at 1. Take this layer, duplicate it, put it at 2. Take this layer, duplicate it, put it at 3. And so on and so forth until you start seeing some extrusion, right? No big thing, just keep on going, keep on keeping on. And if this works for you, more power to you. I highly recommend doing at least 15 to 20 to get a decent extrusion. You may want a bigger one, you may want to go 30, but uh, all right, so that might be a little uh, enough to show you. So we'll go and layer new camera and hit okay. And then just grab this camera tool. It's probably at the unified camera tool. Pull it down to orbit camera so you can just kind of rock the camera. And as you rotate it up, I'll zoom in here and see now you can see. If I turn off all the layers, no extrusion. Turn on the layers, extrusion. And see we're extruding the dark logo. So the white logo sits on top and it gives you this nice faux depth, if you will. Now, I don't necessarily like working this way. This is kind of crazy to sit there and duplicate layers, but it's all right. If that's what you want to do, again, I don't judge. It's all good, but I'm going to delete all this. I'm going to show you a cool trick. Drag this layer back in underneath. So like I said before, I want to extrude this stuff, right? But I don't want to do anything. I, don't, I want After Effects to do the heavy lifting for me because you know what? I'm tired and I just don't feel like doing duplicating. So what do I do? I hit P for position. 
I option or alt click the, the stopwatch, which brings up the expressions. You delete this, and I'm going to paste in this expression right here. I'm going to uh, I'll leave this expression in the description so you can copy and paste it. It'll uh, I can also uh, I'm also going to put it up here on the screen. But basically, what it's saying is right here. This is the Z position. Every time I duplicate it, duplicate it, push the layer one more in Z space, right? So I know that doesn't sound like much, but see it's at zero and I click here. I'm at two, right? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So now all I have to do is hit Command D until I'm ready. And let's say at 21, I'll do 25. Heck, I'll do 30. What the heck? I'm feeling crazy. I'm going to lower my resolution because I have to say this, for every layer you add in 3D space, you're, it's going to take that much longer to render. So I'll go ahead and go back to my, uh, I'll add a camera. Layer new camera. Like so. And I'll rock the camera here. The orbit camera tool. And there you go. There's some extrusion. All right, so either way is not difficult. You can use the expression or you can just duplicate the layer. It's gonna give you the same exact results, right? So now we've got this really cool 3D logo. But you're like, hey, I wanna add paint to this thing. Enough of your nonsense. Thanks for keeping me on target. Let's go ahead and erase this camera and we're done with this comp. Hit save, go to composition, new composition, number five. Number five is a shadow. Because every 3D object needs a little bit of shadow love. Let's go ahead and go back to our very first comp and drag it into the timeline here. Drag it into your comp. All right. So we've got this thing that says rampant. So the very first thing we need to do, need to do is fill it because our shadow is not going to be white. That's weird. If you want a white shadow, that's cool. But in this case, the shadow is going to be black. So let's go ahead and type fill. And just go ahead and drag fill over here. And it defaults to red. I want ours to be black. Like so, blah, blah, blah. And we'll turn our transparency on. Okay. So this is the makings of our shadow. First thing I'm going to do is go into Effect, Blur, and let's just give it like, I don't know, nothing crazy, but let's just do like, I don't know, 30, right? That's good. And then let's go to Blur again and do a Radial Blur and change it from Scratch to Fading Zoom. and. Just pull it out until you like it. And then right here where it says the center, I want the center to be at the top. I want it to pull down. So I'll just click and put it right here. So the shadow streaks down like this. See, pretty cool. And then one more time, we'll just take this layer and just duplicate it. Hit E for effect and highlight radio blur and delete. So you've got a strong shadow and then a faded out shadow. We're done with that comp. See, I told you it was easy. Nothing to worry about. It's all good. Composition, new composition. But before you hit OK, even though this is the last comp, hit six. Final comp. What, what? We made it. Change width from 2600 to 1920 by 1080. This is our first HD comp because we're making, we made all those other comps bigger so we can move around with the camera. All right. So what do we do now? Well, now we build it. And what do you want to see? Well, you want to see things in the order of, of, of how you would perceive, the, perceive them in reality. So let's start with the paint. Put the paint down. And I'll just jump over here into the middle of the comp so we can see things, because obviously paint starts with nothing. And then we'll start, and we'll go on to the shadow. Put shadow on top of the paint. That makes sense to me. The shadow would be on top of the paint. Cool. And then we take our extrusion layer, and bam. Cool. Now let's go ahead and make sure these are all 3D. And I want to show you something. There's another part where people are going to make a mistake and I'm going to get an email saying, hey, this doesn't work, right? Because people sometimes like skip through stuff and then they, they write me on YouTube, dude, this doesn't work. File, or just go into layer, new camera. Grab the orbit tool, my favorite part of the camera tools here, and just rotate it up. Uh, whoa, what is that? I swear I'm going to get this call and this email a hundred times. The way After Effects works is all that 3D data is in a nested comp. We brought this comp into this comp. So how do I get all that data? No big deal. Highlight extrude, right? And go over here and click on collapse transformations. Blammy. Now all of a sudden our 3D extrusions there. Cool. But there's another issue. Let's zoom in a little bit and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'll turn on the, I'll up the resolution here and wait for a second for it to update and you can see what I'm talking about. It appears right here that the very top of our text is at the same layer, is at the same distance, the same location as our paint and our shadow. Let me rotate and I'll show you. 
That doesn't work for me. I can't have that. That's not, that's not what I want. So why is that? Well, it's, After Effects is thinking the very front of the text is where the beginning of your layer is. We're doing the opposite. We want to pull this layer out. So highlight your extrusion layer, hit P, and go right here to the Z depth. And if you pull it back, it goes away. If you pull it up, uh, 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 there we go. So pull it up just enough to where it's sitting on top of everything. Now check it. Now you've got 3D text with the paint wrapped around it and the shadow and all is right with the world here, except for the fact that we don't have a background, but we'll fix that in a second. But check it out, not bad, you know, not bad. If you don't have Zaxworks Pro Animator or Video Copilot's Element 3D, or you don't want to use Cinema 4D, this is a great way to get text extruded in After Effects very quickly. Maybe you're an editor and you want to do some really cool uh, motion graphics really quickly, and you don't want to pay, for, pay someone else for them, or uh, maybe you just want to do some quick uh, temp text that you'll pass off to somebody else. Whatever it is that you're doing, this is a great and easy way to do it. Plus, here's the trick. Once you're done with this, you can go back and change anything at any time, right? So let me just show you that real quick and then we'll get back to making our background. Go over here back to our number one comp, the name. It's like, you know what? I wanna change the name. I wanna change it to Your Co. Welcome to Your Co. Go to Final Comp, boom. See how quick that was? Maybe you don't, maybe you don't wanna change the name, but you're like, I can't stand those colors, dude. Why'd you pick those colors? You're making me crazy. No problem. I'm not afraid of nothing, let's do this. Go back to your paint comp, click on the paint color and just change it to whatever you want. Maybe it's blue on this one and maybe this one's yellow. Double click, just change it. Just change it to whatever you want. Make the client happy. Boom, what? That's crazy. Or what if you're like, look, I don't, my logos aren't text. This doesn't help me. Okay, don't worry. Go back to your name comp. Maybe you've got an Illustrator file. I'll just drag my rampant Illustrator file in here and I'll turn on transparency because my uh, illustrator file is black and I'll turn off rampant and I'll scale this bad boy up just a little bit like like that and if you're using an AI file make sure to go ahead and turn on continuously rasterize that way it gets nice and sharp and then go under effect and go channel invert I'll make it white and then go over here boom whoa boom and everything changes with it. The shadow changes with it. Everything changes because it's all, it's all procedural. It's all affected by itself. So one is in two and two is in three and three is in four and four is in five, you know, or one is in five and they all get compiled. So you can change whatever you want and you can still rock the camera and do whatever you want. Pretty cool, right? All right, so let's go back to making this about rampant. Cool, final comp. All right, so we need a background of some kind. So let's make a quick background. Go layer, new, uh, solid. And in this case, it doesn't matter what color it is because we're gonna add a ramp to it. So it doesn't matter, just pick any color and click okay. And pull it all the way down. Make sure the, the background layer is all the way at the bottom, okay? And again, we're good to go. All right, so making sure that the background layer is highlighted, go to effects and presets and type in ramp. I want a gradient ramp, and if you have the rampant products, that'll pop up too, but highlight gradient ramp and put it on your background layer. Now, I want a radial uh, ramp, not a linear ramp. Right now, it's going, it's a gradation going from black all the way to white. So first things first, change linear to radial. That puts a nice circle here, and I want that circle to be here. So I'm gonna do uh, 960 by 540 here on the start of the ramp, which puts it in the center, and then I'm gonna do 1920 by 1080, which extends it all the way out to the side. Cool, now let's just pick a better color combo. We don't need to go from, uh, from black to white. That's just weird looking with what we have. So let's pick a, just a nice little gray somewhere around here for the center. And then for the outside, we'll pick a cooler gray and a darker gray. There we go, like so. And as you can see, you got a nice, uh, a nice whiter center and a darker outside, which makes this pop. The colors pop, the white text pops a little bit better. And there you go. And then you just move around. Real, real simple. So the next thing you would do is just animate your camera and you can do whatever you want. I've seen moves that go from like here to over here. People get dramatic with their camera angles. Maybe something like it starts out extreme like this and rotates, maybe it does a little thing. And to do that, all you have to do is go to your camera here, twirl this down and twirl down transform. And you've got all the camera information here. So you just do whatever you want. Just pull it to the very beginning and then just highlight 
turn on the stopwatches for whatever you want to, to animate, or you can just do them all, and whether you animate them all or not, it'll still be there. And then just take the camera and just rock it a little bit. And just experiment with whatever camera move works for you. This is obviously just a random camera move. But even just a little bit of motion is great. See? So that, that's simple. You can change the text. You can change the paint. You can add more paint. Let's say you want to get just really crazy. Whether you had more of our paint elements or you just want to go nuts. You're just like, you know, I'm going to put this, grab my arrow tool. I'm just going to put this over here. I'm going to offset it. And I'm going to change this color to, you know, I don't know, a lighter blue. There we go. Like that. And I'm going to highlight this paint, duplicate it. And I'm going to highlight tint. And I'm going to change this to more of a, I don't know, more of a, there we go lighter yellow maybe and I'll move it around and then I'll offset it and I'll put it up here maybe you know whatever it is and then you just go to your final comp and there it is everything transfers so you can do as much or as little as you want that's pretty crazy as far as I'm concerned I wouldn't do that much I'd probably just go back and go yeah that was fun but let's keep it real back to the paint so that's that simple and once this project is done, you, you can change as much as you want. You can also use that same procedure to always do 3D extruded text uh, if you don't ever want to use um, Pro Animator or Element 3D. I highly recommend both of those apps. They're great. I use them both for client work all the time. But if you want to just do simple 3D and you don't want to spend the money and, uh, or you just don't have a budget for it, this is a great way to get 3D extruded text in After Effects for free. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Please uh, like us on Facebook and subscribe to us here on YouTube. And um, that's it. Make sure to go to 4kfree.com, sign up and grab all the free project files. And please tell your friends. And um, yeah, that's it. That's how you put paint around text. Until next time, I'm Sean Mullen for RampantDesignTools.com. Thanks for watching.